if you're watching this uh, either live or recorded, please bear in mind that I have my eyeglasses because I did a little bit of eye procedure earlier this week and I uh, it's not a pretty sight right now. So I am going to kiss a little bit, a bit. I'm going to keep my eyeglasses on for the full session. Um, so you know, just for you to know. Okay, let. I think we can we can start right. Uh, masterclass of this week. Uh, it's about um, platformatic, and it's about building robust application at speed with um, Fastify and platformatic. So we're going to talk about Fastify and Platformatic. Oh, gosh. But while we are here, please keep in mind that you can follow along. So uh, you can use Node V20. We are going to use Node V20. And I recommend you to uh, download and install Meraki, which is our uh, companion. You can use this if you want to. There are assets here. You can just download it. DMG, whatever, just works. Little bit about me. I am the co founder and CTO of uh, Platformatic. Uh, I am also a member of the Node.js Technical Steering Committee, created Fastify, Pino, and a lot of, bunch of other stuff. Um, I have a newsletter, nodeland.dev, if you are interested. I don't know, lot, a lot of stuff. I don't know how much interesting, but what is interesting is yeah, that you are using my software e even if you don't want to. Like, a lot of the stuff that it, you use every day that's powered by, by your stuff, it's using my software. Um, yeah, I got 22 I got twenty two billion downloads last year on um, on NPM. So yeah, incredible. Like I, it grew more or less a hundred million um, times. It, it grew from four hundred million per week to five hundred million per week. Five hundred million downloads. But this is bananas. Like it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Anyway, so this masterclass it's about Fastify, and um, Fastify is one of the fastest, says the name, whatever, a framework for Node.js. In fact, it's not downloaded five million times per month; it's downloaded seven million times per month. And I have not updated this slide since I last done it. Um, how do I know? Well, I know because I do check every now and then about how, how things are going. And in in February it was seven million. Six million and six in, in, in January, so seven million. Yay. So here, let me do that so you can. Funny enough, here we go. Live slide editing. Okay. What are the technical principles of Fastify? There is a full video, full session about Fastify and about uh, that we cover about it uh, in on YouTube. So I'm not going to be too much in details, but just for you to know, Fastify aims to have zero overhead in production compared to Node.js. It also aims to have a very good developer experience. Those two goals typically can be uh, conflicting with each other, so it's about striking a balance between the two. Then it, we want something that works great for both small and big projects, as well as uh, something create to, uh, to create microservices and back, security, plugin system, testable, and so on and so forth. So something very important to know about Fastify is about its community. Fastify is open source and open governance. So that is what does it mean? Well, its development is governed by the collaborator of the project. It's a part of the OpenJS Foundation and uh, it's critical for the community has been critical for the success of the framework. Um, note that Fastify was born before the uh, the Fastify community was born before any code was written. In the sense of we had, um, I started doing Fastify. I, I said, I'm going to write a framework if I can convince another human being to write it with me. And I convinced uh, uh, Thomas de la Vedova, and the rest is history. The most common line that you'll see in Fastify is Would you like to send a pull request? Remember to add unit tests. So it's pretty unique, I would say. So uh, Fastify has grown quite a lot. It We got 58 million downloads in 2023. Pretty good, I would say. It's uh, very, very interesting. It's also fast, right? But you know, you knew that before I started. So, and the community is actually awesome. Hey, uh, so we had uh, 56 ecosystem, uh, uh, 56 core plugins and 20, 225 community plugins. A lot of plugins that you can use to expand your Fastify.
Uh, what is Platformatic? Platformatic is built on top of Fastify. So Platformatic builds on top of the experience that we had with Fastify, and it adds to that, okay? Typically, you uh, when you're building your backend for systems uh, and so on, you spend uh, more or less 80% of the time doing stuff that's absolutely non-relevant to your, to your features. So from setting up local development to set configuring monitoring system to dealing with logs, oh my goodness, logs. Um, a lot of boring stuff, to be honest, but very important. Boring, but very, very important. We wanted to fix this, okay? Platformatic really wanted to fix this. And we started doing it with a lot of our open source tools. So uh, we have created a way to build and reuse services and microservices, microservices, and we call them stackables. And because essentially you can literally stack them on top of each other, and we love Lego too. So uh, we are big Lego fans, so that we needed to call them stackables. And we couldn't use Legos for some, for whatever reason. Also breaks, probably not a good idea. Anyway, at the core of it, it's, it's one called Platformatic Service. Then we have Platformatic DB and a bunch of others, but let's go through them one by one. Platformatic Service is essentially Fastify on steroids. It offers both um, embedded integration for uh, OpenAPI as well as uh, GraphQL but it also offers integration with uh, uh, Prometheus, as well as uh, memory uh, protect, event loop and memory protection with uh, Fastify under pressure, which is something that you should be using every day. Okay, you should be using, um, you should be protecting your application from event loop um, overloading every single, in every application, even if you're using Express or whatever, just do it. There are modules for, for, for all of them. It also has the concept of Fastify autoload, which means that things are automatically uh, registered, as well as Platformatic client. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, on top of Platformatic service, we have created something called Platformatic DB. And Platformatic DB is built on Platformatic service, but it had the concept of automatic REST mapping between your uh, SQL between your SQL database, MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, MediaDB, and so on and so forth, to uh, REST and GraphQL. It's similar to a lot of other tools like that, but it's all built on top of JavaScript, so you can even turn off, and it's very customizable. It also adds support for migrations, which is fantastic. However, as you created multiple services, we have created something to compose them. It's called Platformatic Composer which is actually very useful because it allows us to do a lot of things, okay, in, in terms of um, OpenAPI and GraphQL compositions. So it's pretty interesting. But one of the key parts is Platformatic Client. Platformatic Clients allow us to um, uh, quickly create clients between uh, multiple microservices. So you start, you, you have your own microservice and you want to talk to it, um, you spend you just spend a lot of time writing those clients from scratch, like a lot. Like, yeah, I, I like um, you know, we I was we were working on it internally, and we were just like uh, I had a t I had a few people spending time, a few of my engineers spend before we wrote this uh, spending I don't know two three days to write a client. Like, how can you can spend two three days to write a client? Like, this is should come out of the box. So we um, remove this friction. We create a client that can be generated out of the box with our toolkit. It's basically integrated with Platformatic Client itself. So you basically need to do very little. You can just run a command and generate it, and we'll see it in the slide, in the code. Okay. Now, last but not least, we have Platformatic Runtime, which is essentially it's the magic that allows it to work all together in the sense that it allows us to execute multiple microservices within the same node process, uh, essentially enabling something that it's unexpected. And uh, you can create, you can create, you can essentially write them thing as independently and then deploy as a monolith. This is very useful because you can then later decide to split them in case you, if you want them. So you can postpone the decision of um, microservices versus uh, monolith as late as possible. And we all know how much this is useful uh, when doing business stuff. So what we have announced a, a few weeks ago, it's, it's the Platformatic Stackable Marketplace. 
And um, what is a stackable? Well, the sta a stackable is essentially um, a, a, a system to create composable backends. Okay, so I have my, my monolith and I want to reuse some microservices and I can just click them and just use them. Um, you can see it at marketplace platformatic.dev and you can see them right now. We have our three ones, but look, you can try them. And one, one more is coming soon, 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 soon. So um, to use them, we have created something called Meraki that you can try. And I will recommend you to try today. I'm going to demo it and we're going to do it together if you want. So um, if it's something that's interesting to you, we can we can do it. So let's try Meraki. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what we do, okay, we, uh, we start, we can create a, a library, a folder. Okay, let's do um, workshop. Okay, here we go. This is a workshop, our workshop folder. What we do in here? Well, we um, we want to create uh, with Meraki um, something with Meraki. Okay, so what we will do is we start creating a project in Meraki for movies APIs, and we create three services: a composer, a service, and a DB. So let's 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 try that. Okay, so I have my Meraki here running. Here you go. And we can put my application name and I call it um, movies. And I can put it inside ooh, uh, my workshop folder. Okay. And we can call it movies API. So it's consistent. We can create that. Then we fade speak next. And then we can start adding stuff. So what we want to add we want to add a uh, um, platformatic service, for example. Sorry, platformatic composer. Here we go. And we call it composer. Okay. Then we add a uh, platformatic DB. And then we add a platformatic and we call it uh, movies DB. And then we here we add a service and we call it movies service. Here we go. Then we go next and you see it starts installing stuff. It starts installing our dependencies in here. And quick reminder if you just scroll down and Fast forward here, I am wearing shades because I had done some, some eye procedure on Monday and unfortunately I need the shades. Um, so, going back on the, on, on the slides, here we go. Um, then after that, we need to configure our environment variables so and provide the configuration for our system and configure stuff. Ooh, but I forgot something. Okay, we need to add Fastify Static to Platformatic Composer. So, uh -huh. we'll add it later. And it's currently stalling. Okay, I'm going to go back and add uh, the static one. So, Fastify Static. Here we go. Okay, we add the Fastify Static. Next. Configure service. Ooh, what is missing? Ooh, um, we need to configure a few things, okay? So we want to put here static, for example, and then we want the, uh, uh, the prefix and we want to configure it as UI because we are going to serve our UI here. And then we have DB and service down there. And in DB, we have the connection string, for example, and we do the migrations. Okay, great. Now, uh, the entry point, what is entry point? Is the service that we receive your port. And then let's do JavaScript because I am I am lazy. And then port 3042. Good. And then we hit generate and it generates a wrap. Here we go. And one has been generated and more has been done. And let's see. Okay, app created. Okay, this is done. I need to, we can flip back to here. Here we go. Now let's take a look at what was created. So movies API, less services. 
and we have three stuff okay so let's take a look and let's start let's do for example an npm start to see what's going on and uh, while it's running you can see that it has uh, must exist yeah uh, this is a warning okay good um this folder does not exist and we have this thing and you can see that welcome to platformatic composer here we go and we have some open api docs that was generated for us so we can see that we have get movies for our movies db repo okay and this is from the movies from a movies db service and we have some other stuff from the movie service for example here and so on and so forth pretty cool right does this support mongodb2 no it doesn't it's one of the most requested features so uh if you're willing please let me know i will i need to do it it's just a lot of work so and you can try try it we can test it this is empty for example uh, but we can for example create a movie so if you want to create a movie called star wars we can and then we can get that movie okay now something very cool that you can do it's in here it's uh, doing something like um, a pltps uh, pltps show you show us uh, the um, um, the current situation okay of your system and you can even do plt services and sorry plt ctl services and you can see that we have db service and composer and for example you could uh, even do something called plt inject Ooh, help inject and we need to do plt inject and dash s movies db and we can get get movies for example and we can get our star wars movie for example we can even send a post and uh, x and so on and so forth it's pretty neat and pretty interesting uh that we can interact with all the services with the, the plt command um, note that platformatic db supports transactions so everything when you do an operation is wrapped in a transaction and you can even add add to it and so on and so forth cool okay so let's go back to my slides so we have created meraki we have created this we have created the app we have tested the app and you can see here we can do with curl or or so on and so forth um now what we want to do what we can do is we want to do to create inter communication in our network um we can start creating a client as i said we want to make sure that we can interact between both multiple services and this is what we do so we can take this this code and create platformatic client so i need to go in my in here so here i can go inside services movies service and then i can do npx plt client dash dash name movies db dash dash runtime and i need movies db okay and here we go as you can see now we have a movies db folder here and this was created for us by the system okay and now we can use this so so if i do nvim i can go inside my my routes okay and i can do so i need to if i if i want auto completion i need to add another reference here so i need to do movies db movies db dot d dot yes okay and now i can do fastify dot get upper movies and um yeah it, it knows okay it, it knows already but it's not movie but it's movie dot um title i think i knew we need to change this up a little bit so here we go return object so we want to do ed movie id and title movie title dot uppercase okay and now if you would ooh, 
why it's complaining of undefined let's do something to disable that so sorry about this error we shipped something and we broke something else of course ship it today and as usual um so now and vim i can just do something very very easy here and just disable the management api which is the thing that enable allow you to connect to it with platformatic ps so here we go and npx uh npm start and here we go yep okay so we have created our client okay and then here, then we can go back inside our composer. And now in default, you can see that you have movies, service upper movies, and we can run this code. And ooh, I made a mistake. It's it's there is an error. Okay, undefined get movies. Ooh, and why? Let's check, let's take a look. And movie service. Okay, this is their routes. Movies DB, get movies. So movies DB. Ah, yeah, of course, because I made a mistake. Is it attached to re a copilot trick me? So request. Here we go. Okay. And now I can update it, and now it's working. Here we go. You can see it here. Star Wars happened. So we have created our client, a client attached to the request. And the reason why the client is attached to the request is because we need to forward the security headers and so on and so forth. So it's attached to the request. Pretty neat, right? Okay. There is a question in the chat about, uh, is it deployed with Docker? This is completely orthogonal to Docker. You can run all of these with Docker if you want to, or just play no, Node.js on a VM if you want. Um, it's completely tangential. So if you want Docker, if you don't want Docker, don't worry about it. Okay, so what we can do now is we can start creating some UI for our system, okay? Because we have created our, 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 our little app, so we can create a little bit of a UI for it. Seems cool, right? I'm not a, such a good front-end engineer, so let's see while, 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 while we are doing it, okay? So I can go inside here and do npm create vit at latest and yeah and we want to call it movies ui and we want react and i want to use javascript here you go movies ui npm install let's do it so um there's a few more questions here Correct me if I'm wrong, Platformatic Ask as a container for microservices, right? Does yes and no, it's not a container in the sense of a Docker container, but it can run multiple microservices inside the same node process, which makes it in fact more or less a container of containers or something like that. Service DB is a wrapper. Um, Platformatic runtime is just a normal um, uh, 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 node app, so you need to set it up so that you can just create a Docker container, a Docker file for you. We'll create add one to the repository to to the generator, so in the future you will just be able to Docker build there, and we'll just create a Docker file. But right now it's still not, so I need I need to. Uh, but it's pretty easy to to write one. Okay. In the meanwhile, while we are doing this, let's do um, let's create a repo. So, okay, so git in it. Okay. Okay, and I need a repo. And 
PLT Masterclass uh, March 2024. Here we go, public. We don't want renovate. Why clicking this button is not okay? Well, here we go, created it, copying this out. Now you have what we have done so far. So, uh, do Performatic Clouds an ingress limit? Uh, uh, yes, it has. It has one. Yeah, it's documented. I don't remember it. Um, I've been using Fastify 3 and Fastify 4. When I use it with ESM instead of CommonJS, it feels a little off and some plugins don't perform as expected. Um, open issues, I read call, let me open issues if plugins don't perform as expected with ESM. Like, it should work. Everything should work as expected. Like, there should be no, absolutely no difference between CJS and ESM. Is it possible, so the more question, is it possible to wait a plugin before start to register another plugin? Uh, yes, before because plugin B use a decorator, register in plugin A with plain Fastify, you can see the name of a plugin with it Fastify plugin. Platformatic doesn't have factory Fastify plugin package JSON. No, no, it works exactly the same. In fact, it uses Platformatic Fastify autoload internally. So everything you can autoload. So if you go autoload here. So you can use autoload to do that. And uh, it's... Um, It will add you support to that. So let me show you how. It's here. So you can specify with Fastify plugin, you need to specify your, your, your dependencies and with the name. So now you can... Yeah, there is a Rescal autoload. There is uh, some issues with Vite bundling so and TypeScript. So I am aware, I just don't know what's the problem there. I have not been able, didn't have the time to, to be with the time to look into it. Good questions about what are the difference between a framework like Loopback and a Platformatic. Well, um, Loopback is a framework to writing uh, monoliths and uh, uh, with uh, Platformatic, you can uh, um, decide how you want to compose and your deployment pattern way later on. So it's a framework to build APIs. And you can start building your system uh, one chunk at a time, deploy them as a single unit on deploying them split and everything will work the same. And Platformatic DB is very similar to some of the components that maps um, uh, to REST, uh, uh, DB to, to REST and so on and so forth. So Oh, it doesn't matter, okay? So it's, it's, uh, it's literally, let me show you because it's, so in here we have plugins, okay? So we have this config here called Encapsulate, which add Fastify plugin automatically for us, okay? But we can 100% disable this. And then after that, we could do, okay, a Fastify plugin, then, okay, and then say this is name, um, example, okay, and then we can create another plugin, uh, require example, and let's copy this one out, and this is example two, and then we can say dependencies example, and here we can do Fastify log info uh, example Fastify dot example example to plugin. Let's see if it gets logged and you can see here we get it logged. So let's keep going and take a look at Vit. So we have created this fancy Vit project here. So movies API, okay. Sorry, movies UI. And in here, what we can do, we can um, uh, create a front-end app. 
So we can do uh, and we can do in here npx uh, platformatic client. Okay. Um, 3042 documentation JSON. Okay, well, it's actually not needed. We want it in JavaScript because I'm lazy and front end. This creates us a full a full client. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, fine. Yeah, it just downloaded it. Well, in theory, it should have been cached. So I should thin it up. It's a lot of npm downloads. I am aware. I'm sorry. I'm planning to thin it up in Platformatic V2 and uh, it will have the same functionality with a lot less code to download. Okay, so we have created our API. If you look at it, API, it's a new client, an MJS file, and it's uh, uh, all, and it has some separate types for it. Cool. So how do we use this? We can, uh, here we go. We have in, in API, we can take a look and we get get movies service upper movies. And here we can in app.js, we can add an import for from dot dot and API API dot mjs. And here we want get movies, uh, service upper movies and set base URL. Note that it's actually very important that we set the base URL because if we don't, then we can't really connect to our stuff. So instead we here we do import meta and uh, vt movies API URL or just movie API. Okay, so you can follow the tutorial step by step. Okay. And then we need to specify, you can see here, then we need to specify a use effect for our movies. So, and we need use effect. Do you like use effect or should you think we should not be using use effect? And here, so, um, and we need to have uh, movies and set movies here, okay, and then fetch movies, yeah. And we do call set movies, and then here we just do a nice fetch movies. Here we go. Okay. Now we need to go inside our. Uh, we uh, we can't write our, our our movies. Okay. So we just will. Sorry. Um, which I would just copy it from this file because I am lazy. Here we go. And yay. So let's go back in the code and we need to specify vt movies env. So uh, movies UI need to create an env file. And in here, um, vt movies. Oh, vit, 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 movies API. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And here is. And we need here. Beat. beat. Okay. Great. Um, okay. So we have created that. And we can try it. Let's try it. Okay, npm run dev, and let's open it up. Let's see. Ooh, no movies yet. Um, I guess there is a bug because there is movies uh, fail to fetch. We have not set course. Come on. We need to fetch course. We need to fix course. 
Okay, so we need to set the origin inside our service. And in here, we need to go inside our performatic.json and servers, and we need to say course. And we need to, we, we actually absolutely do what you should not be doing, which is set it to star. So um, now I can refresh my page. Oh, I, I have saved it. Oh, I've saved this. Oh, sorry, I saved this. Then I need to restart my server because that was already started. And wait. Here we go. Okay, now it's something else, some er other error I made. Movies map is not a function. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see the network. So I refresh this. Okay, here we go. We have a network. Oh, okay, yeah, of course, because I have made a mistake in my code. And I have not, oh, I, yes, it should be working. Okay, let's see what mistakes I've done in the code. Ooh. Okay, and so log movies. So the code you can find the code in here and seems about right. So console. Yeah, it's there, it's okay. That is happening. Let's see where we had a wet mistake I've done. Probably have done some mistake here. Let me see and copy it ruthlessly. I've done some very odd error. Oh, but this is, here we go, movies. Here we go, console. Yeah, you see, this is an array. Let me copy the full file because this was working. So, but it should be okay. And this is an empty um, Oh, it's a string? Is it a string? It is a string. Damn! It should not be a string. Okay. Well, it is a bug. It is a bug for you. This should... Oh, yes, I know why it's a string. I made a mistake. Haha, <laughs> here it is. Okay, so the reason why I, why is this a string? And it's because I made a mistake in when I wrote my your, my route. So in my route here, I have uh, created, I, I said this, but I didn't, I didn't set, tell, I didn't configure the schema. So I need to add a schema property that has these two properties, okay? Now, in here, I need to, okay? Client, okay, let's regenerate it. Okay, and then inside my here, I can just drop this. And, nope. Not working still? Very odd. So this is upper movies. So if I go inside in here, so upper movies, let me get my JSON for this upper movies. Oh, yeah. Upper movies? No, I didn't didn't flow through. Why? Upper movies? Did I save? And schema response. Oh yeah, there's a uh, typo. Okay, now it's okay. So here and here we go. Okay, so. 
Now this thing has the schema. Here we go, we have the schema. So here we can refresh it and now it's work as expected. Okay, so um, we have the client and everything is correct. Know that we can do movies. So if you do movies dash zero dash title, you have all the auto completion here. So it's, um, it's over there. Uh, yeah, we tested it. Now, something that you, uh, you might want to do is uh, to build your UI so that uh, um, we can put the API and the UI on the same server for a more production-based deployment. So what you could do is, um, here, let's stop this. So npm run build dash 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 base UI. Okay, and then you can um, copy. Okay, we can just point it. Sorry, that's true. We can just point it. So in our composer, here we you see that we have platformatic static, uh, platformatic uh, fastify static, and um, we can uh, configure our env in in uh, our hand here so that we can point to that to, to that directory so you can see we have um uh, the static root okay and so we can do dot 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 movies movies ui dist and here yeah so let's try this again okay and see if we can this is still the root okay if I can go to UI, it didn't work. Probably need to restart this out. Yeah. Um, here we go. Uh, what mistake did I make? Probably made some mistake. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Movies. Um... UI, here we go, let's see, um, here, I did put UI, composer, oh yeah, of course, because this is wrong, okay, root, yep, okay, this is wrong because we need or no. Oh. Probably it's okay. But yeah. oh yeah, of course. Now it showed up. Okay, great. So um but it's not pinging the right hand point. And let's see why. And it's okay, it's more course problems. Oh, yes, of course, because this is wrong URL. Okay, here we go. And now it's working on its own thing. Cool, I was able to, to crack it with a few. Sorry for the hiccups, okay. Slides will be available, everything will be available. And, uh, and that's it. Can we use Platformatic or Fastify to create a poor microservice backend? So yeah, the, so the, this nice question, um, uh, can we use Platformatic or Fastify to create a pure microservice backend with multiple nodes that communicate among themselves? If so, to implement inter-service communication, we can use only HTTP, uh, REST, or other technology, NATs, and so on and so forth. Right now, we support HTTP uh, and GraphQL. We have also added a tool called PGUX, which is actually pretty, pretty neat and interesting. If you want, I can uh, demo it to you. It allows you to essentially, it's an outbox pattern so that you can essentially uh, call a service that, could, that will call a service again and again and again and again and again up until it's done. Um, so it's a fight and forget, but with a, um, with a queue in, in between. So it also supports Crohn's and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, what app can I use to generate migrations and undo migrations? Uh, ChatGPT, to be honest.
ChatGPT is probably the best to generate you a schema from text and migrations. Yeah. I, I am not an aviator, unfortunately. I would really love to not have the shades, but everybody's loving the shades in the call, so I might make them a, a, a recurring themes. So there is a good question about, have you planned to support any other language in Platformatic in micro, that's common in microservice? I plan, we plan to, well, we support TypeScript. Um, but we, at this point, we are not planning to support any other languages, but you see, I don't necessarily have a custom GPT for Node.js, but I typically use it very little on Node. It's actually common. Um, it's actually easy to do. You have seen it to, to write demos and stuff. I typically use it for like for SQL table and stuff. It's actually way handy because it can get the syntax right for that specific database dialect. Absolutely. It's fantastic. So for database schemas, it's actually super great. It's super good. Um, is there as an example how to build a real life project with some kind of DDD using Platformatic somewhere? No, we do not have one, but we are actually planning to write one. Um, if that happens, I will. You will. You will do a big splash on it. Uh, how are you? So you are trying to use. So there is another question. I'm trying to use Platformatic DB as core for several services written in Ruby and Python. My main pin point is distributed transaction. I solved using. JS if I need transaction. Every single uh, API endpoint is wrapped in a transaction. And if you use GraphQL, everything is wrapped inside a transaction. But um, if you need to do multiple microservice calls and so on and so forth, then you will need to use your own transaction system and uh, some form of um, some form of distributed transaction system and so on. Another question about using the green standards Wang UI and Swear. Uh, then instead, so you want to use the old uh, UI instead of uh, the fancy new um, scalar. Is that the, your question? I find the scalar one way better, way nicer. So what you can do is you can just disable OpenAPI and just uh, enable uh, Fastify Swagger, and that will just work. Like you can just use the Fastify Swagger one, and that's it. It will just work. So it's uh, to install Fastify uh, Swagger UI, and then everything should work as expected. Hey, amazing! I'm so happy that I convinced one person to use Platformatic. It's fantastic. I'm very, very uh, thrilled by it. So um, let me know what you're doing and uh, if you if we can help. Open box if you find problems, send PRs and yay. Cool. Thank you, folks. Thank you for watching. We'll send through the slides. Uh, I have one more thing to say, though. Uh, we have um, we are planning the next masterclass. You will probably love them because it's about Node.js streams and you definitely don't want to miss the Node.js streams one. Now, I might think about doing that with the, sun, the, the sunglasses or not, the shades or not. So you really want to sign up for the streams one. The stream, um, one of the mainstream maintainers is going to do a masterclass on streams, which I hope is going to be a big hit because this is, you should really, really want to do that. Very happy to uh, for everything. So um, thank you very much for for joining, and thank you all for uh, the questions and so on and so forth. So this has been hopefully uh, uh, helpful for you, and thank you very much. And see you next month. Bye bye.